I would like to now invite um, Ms. Jeanette Sadiq-Khan to the floor. Thank you very much. She is the Commissioner of uh, New York City Department of Transportation. Thank you. Well, it's great to be here to talk uh, about a little bit about what we're doing in New York City uh, to bring sustainable transportation programs uh, to the 8.2 million folks that live there. And I think we heard this morning that uh, cities are the solution and um, we're looking to sort of build on the natural uh, efficiencies uh, of cities. And our framework really began for this work in 2007 when Mayor Bloomberg announced his Plan YC initiative. It was the first time that we've had actually a sustainable transportation initiative. Uh, in the city of New York. And what we did was it really started out as a planning exercise to see how the city could continue to grow and thrive over the next 25 years. And what the plan concluded was that the only way New York City could continue to grow and thrive was to reduce its environmental impact and to improve the quality of life in the city's business districts and in its neighborhoods. And that if we expanded housing, transportation, and energy capacity, uh, we would go a long way to make profound gains in that arena. Plan YC called for a completely new transportation policy and new transportation priorities. Uh, rather than just focusing on improving uh, traffic and moving cars as quickly as possible from point A to point B, it looked at what we could do to reduce traffic and what we could do to expand public transit and look for new mobility options like building uh, bicycling into a real viable uh, transportation option for New Yorkers. And all of that really requires a very significant change in the way that we organize our streets. Uh, Plan YC didn't set any specific targets for modal targets for how we were going to uh, make these kinds of transitions, but we did start with uh, congestion pricing. And congestion pricing uh, uh, project that uh, Mayor Bloomberg announced uh, two years ago would have charged New Yorkers $8 to come to the Central Business District. And that would have reduced uh, vehicles into the Central Business District by some 7%. So some of you may have followed it. It was close to passage. It uh, passed the city council. It had the support by a majority of New Yorkers, uh, but it was killed uh, by our state legislature. I think it's important to note that the MTA, which is our uh, public transit agency, uh, has some money for now, but in about two years it's going to be faced with a significant deficit. So I do think that congestion pricing in New York City is a matter of when and not a matter of if. Uh, Plan YC set uh, a target of reducing carbon emissions by some 30% uh, by 2030, and our sustainable transportation programs uh, are responsible for about one-fifth of that reduction. Uh, interestingly, uh, Plan YC also found that uh, continuing population growth in New York City paid off significant national and global benefits because moving a million more people to New York City uh, between now and 2030, where we live, energy efficient, uh, transit-oriented lives is much better than having them sprawl out uh, across America. And you can sort of see some of the advantages there. New Yorkers actually have about one-third of the carbon footprint uh, of the uh, average American. So if you take a look at the top band there, uh, you can see the avoided sprawl benefit. Um, so as the mayor likes to say, if you really want to save the planet, you should just move to New York City, uh, or I suppose another dense city like uh, Istanbul. Uh, we have a smaller uh, environmental footprint because uh, our mode shares are already distributed pretty eff effectively. Only one-third of all of the trips in New York City are made by car, and less than half of the households even own a car. So I think we can still do a lot to improve on that. You can see there's a dramatic uh, uh, number in terms of the trips that are made uh, by automobile uh, under two miles. And so we're really capturing that uh, increment. What can we do to improve that gap, that two-mile gap. Um, and so what we're doing in New York City, we uh, announced a strategic plan two years ago um, that is a detailed plan, and it provides uh, uh, about 150 specific goals and benchmarks. And uh, we just released an annual update uh, which, which builds on that. And the goals, I think, are, are pretty significant. Uh, uh, we've got a lot of quantitative targets that are in there. And they really do have some profound implications for the way that we design our streets and the way we use the street between, the, the space between buildings, as Jan Gell would, would call it. 
Um, our safety uh, policies in particular call uh, for us to reduce uh, annual traffic fatalities by 50% from 2007 levels. And you can see uh, we've got some good work that we've done in that regard already. We've reduced traffic fatalities in the city by 30% in the last 10 years, and they're now at the lowest level than they've been since 1910, which is when the city first uh, started collecting uh, data. And we're really much more in line with some of our global uh, competitors rather than uh, uh, we're twice as safe as the next big American city. So uh, one of the things that we're really working to do is to address the overrepresentation of seniors, 65 and above, uh, in our traffic fatalities. We cannot significantly reduce pedestrian fatalities in New York City if we do not uh, focus um, on, on changing that situation. And so what we've done is we take uh, demographic and crash information and we, we marry it and we've targeted 25 areas around the city for improved um, traffic calming and, and walking conditions. And it's uh, in full swing, and while it's tough to uh, assign causality uh, to the changes that we've made at this point, we've seen a 36% reduction in traffic fatalities from last year uh, to this year. And I think, you know, the issue of traffic safety is really critical when you're taking a look at uh, sustainable uh, transportation programs, because it's very difficult to talk about getting people to walk more and bike more if they're scared about getting hit by a car. Um, so while we don't have mode share targets, we do track objective transportation trends, and you can see here that most of the uh, uh, increase in travel demand over the last uh, decade was uh, absorbed by public transit. Uh, and what our challenge is is really to continue that trend. Um, so finally, in terms of hard targets, this is from our strategic plan. It's completely built around measurable targets, and so we're, do, we're showing uh, New Yorkers uh, what it is that we're doing and also taking advantage of, of new opportunities as they arise. So now I'm going to talk about some of the key projects that we've implemented uh, since 2007. Um, I, think, I really want to underscore that I think the biggest innovation that we've made uh, at New York City DOT is the fact that we're now a fast-moving transportation agency, and I think that's seen as really an oxymoron in the United States, fast-moving and transportation agencies. Um, so we're showing uh, results rather quickly uh, rather than waiting uh, for planning studies that take uh, decades or uh, years to get done. So uh, our projects are done very quickly. We do them with planters, with paint, with leftover blocks from our, our bridge programs. Uh, at a later date, we expect our capital programs to, uh, to catch up, but right now we're basically making these spaces usable uh, overnight. And I think it's really important because it gives uh, New Yorkers the sense, the tangible sense of a greener uh, city, and it's something that they can see, touch, and feel. Uh, that's not to say that there's not a lot of uh, intensive outreach and traffic planning and, and, and data analysis, um, but what we're doing is we're implementing uh, the programs very quickly after we uh, finish the outreach. Uh, we've really done as much as we can to uh, shift our approach, for how we look at streets, uh, from looking at them as, as utilitarian quarters to move cars as quickly as possible, from point A to point B to treating them as the valuable public spaces that they are uh, and, and, the, and recognizing that they serve a variety of roles. Um, and there are many uh, city places in the city that are essentially overpaved, and so we're really reclaiming uh, a lot of that overpaved uh, uh, foundation. Actually, it's, I think of it as a gift from Robert Moses that he paved a lot of New York, and so it gives us the opportunity to reclaim it for different purposes. Uh, so, uh, this is what we've done in, uh, on Broadway. It was one of our key uh, initiatives this year, uh, Broadway Boulevard, where we basically took uh, a lane of traffic and, and inserted uh, a linear plaza, and we put a protected bike lane in, uh, and it really transformed what had been a wasteland in New York City, uh, in midtown Manhattan, uh, and created a whole series of, of uh, linear plazas from 59th Street to 23rd Street. Uh, you can see here what we've done is we've flipped the traditional, uh, we've actually, this is the piece where we've closed off and we've got the, uh, the, the uh, plaza off to the right. When we started this, New Yorkers were quite skeptical. Uh, I remember uh, one of our uh, newspapers, a tabloid paper, the New York Post, was interviewing uh, people and to see what their experience was and there was a guy that was there and he started complaining about how he's never going to use this, he's not going to eat his tuna fish sandwich in the middle of traffic covered with carbon monoxide. And uh, about five minutes later, he was sitting down in the plaza happily chewing away. 
Um, so I think that um, it's, it's, people are responding really well. This is what we did uh, in Madison Square on 23rd Street. It was the longest uh, uh, expanse of asphalt in the city. It was like two football fields. Um, and we uh, transformed it into a series of new uh, public plazas. And these projects really served as trial runs, the ones that we did in 2008 uh, for a much more ambitious corridor project that Mayor Bloomberg announced last February. Uh, and so what we've done is, again, this is the transformation of Herald Square on 23rd Street. And that's, that's another angle. And that's uh, Times Square. Again, we're doing a lot of this just with paint and with planters. And uh, they're extremely popular. Uh, and there's actually far less traffic on these segments right now because Broadway is no longer a through street. It's really a local access street. So traffic is moving on 7th Avenue and, and 6th Avenue uptown, uh, and it's provided incredible space for people. In the last two years, we've uh, transformed 52 acres of uh, roadbed uh, and transformed it into a new public space. Uh, we're also uh, doing more in other areas. This is uh, on 9th Avenue. This is something that we did last year. Uh, and this is what we did, uh, one of our first projects in Brooklyn on the waterfront. You can see the before uh, and the after there. And uh, that one we did actually in, in about eight hours. Uh, and I, we really wanted to show people, it, you can uh, make a difference. It doesn't need to take uh, forever. And we're continuing to do work on the South Bronx and Queens and uh, throughout the city. Um, rearranging our streets in a new way is, is key to our mobility strategy. And I feel really passionate about the fact that we've got to do more to make our transport our public transport system work better. And that means using our streets and prioritizing our streets differently for buses. Uh, New York City has the largest bus fleet in North America and it has the slowest bus speeds. You can get across Midtown Manhattan faster by walking than by taking the bus. In fact, my traffic commissioner says the only way to get across town is actually to be born there. So uh, <laughs> we're doing everything we can to, to address that. And I think in Istanbul, people understand uh, you know, that with the right package of technology and designs and planning, you can make a difference. Uh, and, and, and you can uh, dramatically improve bus speeds and reliability. And we had some early uh, successes on uh, select bus service routes uh, on the big crosstown uh, route on uh, Fordham Road. We also did it on uh, 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 34th Street in Manhattan. And with just very simple innovations, off-board fare collection, uh, uh, giving uh, buses the green light and holding it for them longer, uh, ridership's up, travel times are down, and an unheard of, this never happens in New York City, but 98% of riders supported the new program, which is like the second coming, it never happens. We're a very uh, fractured group. So uh, we're also doing as much as we can to roll out next bus information. We just piloted that. Uh, this summer, and we're going to roll that out system-wide, working with the MTA's new leadership. And the idea is to build a much more robust, really true surface uh, subway system. And, and these are the routes that we're going to be implementing. We've got actually eight routes that we're going to be doing uh, over the next 10 years that have been committed to. We're rolling out a new uh, dedicated um, uh, bus rapid transit route on First Avenue. We're going to be putting in a bike lane and a bus lane. Uh, this year, and I, we really do need to have that be a, a, a new addition to our, our public transport system. Uh, and this is really the way that we're going to have it look in the future. This is the, this is the next phase of what we're going to be doing uh, actually on 34th Street. Um, we're also committed to doubling uh, bike commuting uh, by 2017 and, and uh, tripling it uh, uh, shortly thereafter, which means building safer lanes. So these are the street designs that we've got going on. Uh, one of the big things is that the pedestrian, uh, it's, it's much better for pedestrians because we've uh, shortened the, the crossing distances. And when we put these kinds of innovations in, we've seen uh, traffic fatalities and injuries go down 30%. Uh, so I think that uh, taking a look at that, uh, and, and the volumes are way, way up. Uh, that's on the, again, a different view of Ninth Avenue. And again, this just used to be this vast expanse uh, of uh, uh, concrete. And uh, now you can see it's actually a, in a, a feeling green corridor. This is a narrower version that we put in on Grand Street. Um, and again, we've, we've seen a 30% uh, improvement in terms of uh, safety on that um, uh, section of uh, the city. We just finished our first two-way uh, protected uh, bike lane. Uh, I, it would probably take a whole other slideshow to go through all of what we're doing <laughs> to improve our bike network. Um, but the idea is, is that we're, doing, we're making investments to make it better and faster 
uh, each month and really make cycling a viable option uh, for New Yorkers instead of it being a sort of alternative transportation mode. Uh, you can see the results that we've, we've, got, we've got from 2007 to 2008. We had a 35% increase uh, in cycling and we had a 26% uh, increase from 2008 to 2009. And if we continue the trend, we will have doubled uh, bike commuting by uh, 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 in just three years alone. And we've seen a significant drop in injuries as well. All of the designs that I've talked about are incorporated in a new uh, street design manual uh, that we just released. Uh, we had 11 city agencies working together for two years, uh, and now all of our designs are integrated uh, into this new design manual. And so we are institutionalizing uh, all of the changes that we're making. So it's a new operating uh, code, really, for the streets of New York. And so on the private sector side, on the public sector side, uh, these are the designs that you need to use, and so we're bringing a very different DNA uh, to the streets of New York going forward. Um, the public seems to be responding pretty well to the changes that we're making. Uh, the Broadway piece, this was, uh, uh, there's been a lot of polling, obviously the Broadway uh, is the, the Broadway project is really a, a big showcase, and this was done by a Quinnipiac poll, showed a two to one support uh, of registered voters uh, for the program. We also have a, a report that we haven't released yet, uh, which, which shows even stronger support uh, for what we're doing along uh, on Broadway. We're seeing positive support in, uh, in, the, in what we're doing on the bus projects, and we're seeing tons of cyclists voting with their pedals. Um, and I think we've really tapped into a hunger for public space. Uh, this is in, in Madison Square. Uh, what ends up happening is we put out these orange barrels when we block off to start the construction work, and about five minutes after we uh, block them off, these, I don't know where these people come from, but they like materialize out of nowhere. It's like a Star Trek episode. Suddenly, like all these people are coming out of the air. And uh, this actually was an art class that uh, took to the streets about an hour after we um, started the program. We've seen huge crowds come out uh, and enjoying the new space. We did a, a, a series of summer streets project where we closed seven miles of Park Avenue for people to walk, play, dance, cha-cha. Very uh, successful. We did small of the weekend pedestrian walks in 15 uh, locations in all five boroughs. Um, I'm not saying that we've made converts of the 8.2 million New Yorkers. I think that you know my experience in two years at the transportation department is that out of a city of 8.2 million people, it turns out there are 8.2 million traffic engineers because uh, everybody has a very uh, strong view of how their streets should be used. And that's not surprising. It's their front lawn. It's, their, it's where they you know, go out and, and enjoy and eat lunch and do, do whatever. So um, there are always those that are resistant to change, but we are working as hard as we can. We did 2,000 meetings last year with uh, stakeholders. Uh, and uh, every single project that we do goes uh, through some kind of uh, adjustment uh, to reflect the public uh, input. But I think the real strength of the approach in New York is that it's the policy of the city of New York uh, to make these changes. And uh, Plan YC is very clear on this point. Um, Ricky asked me to take a look at what I thought the upper limit was in terms of car ownership in New York. And uh, I think that, uh, w you know, the fact that we've got a third of New Yorkers, only a third getting around by car, half uh, of the households don't even have cars. If we put in a robust bus rapid transit network, a, bus, a robust bike share uh, program, if we continue to do, we're launching a car share program in New York, um, I think we're going to start to see some really, really profound gains um, in that regard. You can track uh, what we're doing uh, on the web. All of the uh, information is, is out there, so I encourage you to see what we're doing. Uh, follow us on uh, to see our success in the Sustainable Streets Index uh, and also what we're doing uh, uh, with our strategic plan. So I look forward to the discussion, and thank you for the opportunity to be here today. Well, thank you very much, uh, Jeanette. It was an excellent presentation. It seems like New York City is going to be a very different city to live in than the city I lived in as a student 15, 20 years ago. 